The best cameras for filming your puppets. To the puppet nerds of the world, this may sound absurd, but this is the place you need to be. We'll do an interview and then we'll stitch and glue all of the dolls will make a shake. If you wanna be in the know when to play like a pro, subscribe to Puppet Nerd. Welcome back, Puppet Nerds. Adam Krutinger here, and today we're gonna talk about some different cameras that you can use to film your puppets. Now, in this video, we're not gonna be talking a lot about specs or special features. We're gonna talk more about physical features of cameras that work really well for filming puppets. And I should mention that this video is more geared for people who are gonna be kind of doing a run and gun style of filming, especially people who have a team of just themselves or maybe one other person. Now, these are two of the cameras that I highly recommend to people if they want to level up their puppet videos. This is the Canon M50 and this is the Canon M5. They look pretty similar but there are some key differences that would make a big difference to puppeteers. And again these are not cameras with the highest specs. These are things that you want to use if you've been filming on your phone and really want to level up without going crazy because cameras can get expensive. These are pretty reasonably priced especially considering all they can do. And if you are still filming on your cell phone, there is nothing wrong with that. If you click here, I actually already did a whole video on how to film and edit and publish a video completely from your phone. But anyway, back to these cameras. So here's the biggest difference between these cameras. The M50 has a screen that flips out to the side and the M5 has a screen that flips down. These are things that I think normal camera people don't think a whole lot of, especially if they're using a monitor. But if you're doing a run and gun shoot all by yourself, this is gonna make a humongous difference. Unless you're a left-handed puppeteer, but I'll get to that in a minute. So if you've ever filmed your puppets before, you know how important it is to have a monitor. It is the industry standard for performing puppets for television. And I have a whole video on different types of monitors that work great for puppeteers as well. Be sure to check the video link down in the description for that. But sometimes there are those certain shots where you just can't get a monitor in, it's just too big. Even smaller monitors that you can attach to the camera still stick out and are hard to get into certain spots. That's why having a camera with a flip screen like this can be handy for some occasions. So let's take another look at the Canon M50. Again, the M50 is the one where the screen flips out to the side like this. Now being able to see your screen like this is so handy. However, having it flip out to the side can be a little bit annoying for a puppeteer, especially if you're right-handed. Because if I point this at me, and if I'm doing my puppet like this, that screen is on the opposite side. I wish that it flipped out to this side. That would make it much easier for me to see. But then again, if you're left-handed, it's probably gonna work out perfect. And something that can make it even worse is that most of these cameras come with a kit lens that's even longer, which obscures your vision from that monitor even more. But now let's switch over to the M5. Like I told you, the M5 flips down. So that gets rid of all those problems immediately. Now that monitor is directly below it and I can see it perfectly without any strain or worry that my vision is gonna be blocked. But you might be thinking this already, there's an obvious problem when I go to put this on a tripod. As soon as it's on the tripod, you'll notice that unfortunately this Screen can't flip down anymore. There's nowhere to go. The tripod is in the way. That makes this extremely inconvenient and actually unusable with a regular tripod. But I'm gonna show you this hack that I came up with that fixes that problem. And I'm even gonna show you how to make this rig too. Now, depending on what materials you use, it might look a little different, but right now the one I currently have looks kind of like this. This is a bent arm with a quarter inch thread right here and it can be threaded in on the bottom as well. This offsets the camera so that I can bend that screen down. All right, you screw that in, and then you just screw in the camera right here like this. And now, since it's sticking out over that edge, I can flip this edge down, and now I have a perfect working monitor for this camera. Now with this addition, this is now the perfect camera for when I film these mini puppet spots. While performing, I can perfectly see the screen and now there's not even any chance of the lens getting in the way. Now let me show you a simple way in how to build one. And be sure to stick around till the end. I'm gonna give you a bunch more tips on why this is such a great tool. 
here are the supplies you're gonna need. A piece of aluminum, this one's about one inch wide, about 12 inches long. It's a scrap, so it's kind of bent, but a straight piece would be easier. And anything that's about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch thick will work. I think this is a quarter inch. You'll need two quarter inch threaded knobs like this. And you'll need one of these double-ended threaded couplers that are a quarter inch. You'll need a quarter inch drill bit, a drill, now this isn't exactly necessary, but a small vice grip helps a lot in bending the aluminum. You'll also need a piece of paper, and I like to use a pencil and Sharpie as well. Those are all the supplies you need, and I'll link them all down in the description. So, let's get started. And if you don't wanna make something, I have another suggestion for people who aren't as crafty. Now the first thing I have to do is measure over how far I need to put that hole. And I found the best way to do it perfectly is to use the camera and a piece of paper with a pencil. So what I do is this, I bend this up and I like to use the paper because it makes sure that it's perfect. If you're off just a little bit, you won't be able to get this to bend all the way flush. So what I do is this, I take this paper, I put it flush with the screen and then I just kind of find where that hole is and poke it through. And the pencil is not really going to hurt that, so you should be fine. Now I have the perfect distance for that hole. So then what I'm going to do is come over here, and I want to put the hole probably about at least an inch in, maybe a little bit more. I guess I'll go about an inch and a half. So I want to put it about this far. So what I'm going to do is take this paper, and I know the distance from the edge of the paper to the hole is perfect. So what I'm going to do is line it up so I can see, let me do this line in Sharpie so you can see it better. Line it up so that I can see the hole through it. So now I can see that hole through it. I'm gonna line it up perfectly. And then one thing that I like to do, just to be a little bit safe, is after it's flush, I pull it just a little bit over to have the paper slightly overlapping. That way I for sure am not gonna have a problem with it. So now that I know that I need to drill right on that spot and that the screen is gonna be on this side. So next let me put in my drill bit. Because this quarter inch threaded knob is the same diameter as this hole, I want to give that drill bit a little bit of a wiggle inside just so I have a little extra clearance for this to pass through. Now let's test it out. Oh yeah, that is perfect. To quote Jim Krupa, you need a little bit of that wiggle factor. It's not a bad idea to hit that with a little bit of sandpaper too, just to get rid of some of those burrs. Okay, now that we have it this far, let's just do a test fit. That is perfect. You can already tell that this is gonna work out really nicely. Now if you wanted to, you could stop right here. It'd be very easy to drill another hole and just have this thread right into your tripod and it would be offset like that. But personally, I like to bend it a little bit just to get it a little bit more centered for balance of the tripod. Although that's really just a personal preference. Now this bending process is kind of tedious. Once you're done, you could make a pattern of it just by laying it down on a piece of paper flat and tracing it out. But it kind of takes a lot of trial of error. Do a little bending, and then check it, see if it's level. Do a little bending, see if it's level. So I'm gonna do that right now. There we go, that seems like a decent shape. And I also sanded down the edges a little bit and I drilled an extra hole. That gives you two options. You could even drill more holes too if you wanna be able to move it further down the line. But now I'm gonna make a hole on the bottom as well so that we can attach it to our tripod. There you go. Now let's put it on and test it. All right, the first thing you're gonna do is take your coupler and screw it on. That's what allows us to put this into here so we can attach our new rig. And you want that to be snug, as snug as you can so it doesn't wiggle around. All right, I got that on nice and tight. So now what I'm going to do is screw my camera in just like this. 
And now I have a nice flip down screen that I can use. So I was able to make this in about 10 minutes just using some scrap metal lying around in my studio. If you're gonna go out and buy supplies, I would get a metal a little bit thinner. Even though it's fine for monitoring the puppetry, I would prefer a slightly thinner bar. And if you're someone who doesn't have the means or interest to make one of these little contraptions on your own, there is something else you can do. You can buy what's called a camera cage and you can actually hang the camera from the hot shoe just like this. And then you mount this whole cage on your tripod and that's another way to do it. But sometimes these cages can be a little bit expensive and now you're starting to get a little bulky too. At this scale, I wouldn't mind just having the external monitor on. Kind of defeats the purpose in my opinion. I love having that lower profile. And if you don't have a camera cage, another cheap way to hang the camera from the hot shoe is to use one of these friction arms like this. If you get a hot shoe mount, you can attach it to your camera just like this. And it can also hang down really nicely to work for filming your puppets. A nice added bonus for this feature is you don't even have to use a tripod then. You can also get a clamp end on it. Then you can attach it to pretty much anything, a desk, a pole, even the end of a table. The only reason I don't like this method is because it takes up space on the hot shoe. And in the next video, we're gonna talk a lot about audio for this type of a setup, and that's gonna interfere with your audio because that hot shoe is designed to hold a microphone. So depending on your setup, this could work, but still it's not my preferred option. And I feel like this one that I showed earlier, I made this out of an L bracket that I'll link down below. It was actually a big pain in the butt to make because this screw here is upside down and it's meant to be kind of held like this. So I would definitely recommend using this method in instead if you're gonna make one. This is a much cheaper method too. So now between the M50 and the M5, you can't really make a bad decision as far as filming your puppets. In so many ways, the cameras are so similar. But to me personally, it's just so valuable to have that flip down screen. And I know some people might be thinking, I'm never gonna use that flip down screen. You might be saying, I always use an external monitor when I film. And that's exactly what I try to do too, but sometimes you're just in a pinch. You're in the middle of a situation and not a lot of space. And sometimes it's not even because of space. Sometimes it's because of time. If you literally only have five minutes to shoot with somebody, maybe you're interviewing someone important and you just have to be in and out, it might take too much time to set up a whole monitor. And another thing is too, when you're interviewing people, having a lot of gear can seem kind of intrusive and make them seem nervous. Being able to walk in with a small camera on a little tripod is way less intrusive than bringing in a monitor. Though again, I can't stress it enough, use an external monitor whenever possible. So long story short, I recommend any camera with a flip down screen, and it doesn't have to be the M5 like I use. I'm just recommending that one because it's one that I have experience with. I'm sure there's many other makes and models that also have a flip down screen, and I would recommend that too for this style of filming. And click right here if you wanna see a short film that we actually filmed completely using the M5. It's called Wish for Wimple, and we made that during a 48 hour film competition. So you can see how it holds up. One more thing I wanna point out, cause I know I'm I'm gonna get it in the comments is people might be wondering if these cameras, if the LED screens, if they are straight scan or reverse scan. And if you don't know what those are, reverse scan is a mirror image. It's what you see when you see in the mirror. And everything being reversed, which is straight scan, is the industry standard for professional puppetry filming because you get to see exactly what the audience sees at home. And straight scan is what you want because that's exactly what the normal monitors put out and the industry standard for all film puppetry, at least in the US. Out of the box, these cameras do reverse scan, but if you update the firmware, you can change them to straight scan. I'll show you how to do that real quick too. This is on the M5, but it's pretty much the same for the M50 as well. You turn on your camera, you click menu, and then at least on the M5, right on the first page, it's the last option there, reverse display off. That's how you want it. Again, when you purchase the camera, it is on. You wanna make sure it's switched off for filming puppetry. So again, these are a great option if you're filming by yourself or with a small team. And if you're interested in the type of camera gear that I'm using to film my tutorials, I have all that linked down in the description as well. And be sure to check out my playlist and tons of recommendations with camera gear, microphones, monitors, 
perfect for any puppeteer who's doing their own DIY filmmaking. Anyway, that's it for now. We'll see you next time.